Hi, everybody. I am here today with Kelly Predent. It, say your last name, <laughs> Fred Meski. Fred Meski with Celestial yes. Cruises. I'm Angela Hughes with Trips and Ships Luxury Travel. And this is my Travel Talk Live that I've been doing um, a couple times a week now. And we're so excited to talk Greece today. Yes. Um, and I have a limited voice today, but we um, feel like Greece is going to be our only option maybe to get out of Dodge here. Talk to me about that just a little bit. Well, I mean, yeah, Greece is, as a destination, is fantastic because they really locked down very quickly and had a very low number of cases. So as a destination, they are probably in some, in terms of like other places in Europe, in some of the best shape you could be in, in terms of right. opening for tourism. Right. So when do you think... When do you think that we might open for tourism for that? I mean, I've heard July. What's what? What are you hearing? Well, um, I mean, I think we're all in the same boat. It's all speculation at this point right. because right. there's not anything in concrete yet. So, yes, I heard July too, um, but we don't really know what that means. Who who that will apply to and how it will all work really. Yeah, because I heard initially it's going to be United, um, you know, like the EU mm -hmm. area. And then we did initially add on America and so forth. And I mean, we're all aiming for like late August, early September for a start date. Would you say that you guys are hoping for that too? We Yes, we hope so. As of right now, um, we're set to start June 29th. So we'll see okay. what happens. Yeah. Okay. You recently, um, well, how long have you been with the company? First of all, I've been with Celestial for two years now. Okay. And I, I feel like they're kind of relatively new to our arena, maybe because you became the, the business development manager and we're just hearing a lot more about it or. Well, so yeah. So Celestial Cruises is not a new cruise line. We've right. been around for a while. We've been around since 2014, but we're actually part of the Lewis Group, which is a Cyprus-based mm -hmm. um, travel company that's really big in terms of both inbound and outbound travel services. Yeah. Also, they own us. They also own and operate like 25 resorts and hotels in Cyprus and the Greek islands. So they've been like around for a long time, like 80 right. years. Um, but Celestial in the past, we primarily worked with just tour operators and DMCs. So like if you've ever gone to the Greek islands with Globus or Trafalgar or Insight Vacations or Gate One, they all use us as their partner for Greek island cruising. So you guys but, have been the backbone of all of the... Right. But people work. don't necessarily know our name because it was packaged as one of their packages. We just established our North American sales team to start working with our trade partners directly in the beginning of 2018. So now we're out here working with all of our trade partners and developing our relationships. Um, so you guys become more familiar with us as well. Yeah. So I feel like Greece is like the hottest spot. And it has been the hot spot forever, but yeah. um, I have no problem selling a grease package. Like I feel like that's everybody's bucket list. Yes. And maybe we've done some overkill on grease. Um, just, you know, everybody wants to go to Santa Torini. Everybody wants to go to Mykonos, but there are so many other great islands there. Well, and that's why on a calendar, right? Don't you think? It's so amazing. Like Greece is one of those places where people will travel back to. Yeah. They'll go again because there is so much to explore. Yeah. So I was coming out, out of um, Dubrovnik in Croatia last year and just stopped at some of those lower islands that you don't hear so much about. And uh -huh. the beaches were fabulous. There were so many blue coves of just exciting places to, yep. you know, lay out and be a part of. And it was me and a million of my closest European friends, right? So uh -huh. where's your favorite spot? What's my favorite spot? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I know you came off of a big um, trip prior to this, what, in October? Yeah, I was I was yeah. over there um, 
on one of our seven night cruises. It was the, the eclectic. And I have to say, I've, I've gotten to go, I think like three times now um, in the past two years. And my favorite port by far that I've gotten to go to is the port of Volos, which is where you can get to Meteora. Mm -hmm. And if you're not familiar with Meteora, you need to put it on your bucket list immediately. <laughs> your pictures were amazing from there. That's really yeah. like a highlight for people. Yeah, they're, it's epic because um, it's on the mainland of Greece, actually. The islands get so much of the glory, but yeah. mainland Greece is stunning. And a lot of people don't realize how mountainous it actually is. So Meteora is about two hours inland from the coast, and it's this mountainous region of Greece where it, the landscape really changes to like these huge jutting limestone cliffs with yeah. monasteries dating back to the 1400s perched on the top. So it's just like unlike any place I've ever seen. Yeah, it's so interesting. People, you know, will do a couple nights in Athens and then they'll head up to the islands. Um, I actually went at Christmas a couple of years ago and we went up to Delphi and some of those areas and yeah. It was snowing, you know, yeah. and you, just, you know, you don't think of Greece as like, oh, we get snow in, in Greece. So well, even on the island of Crete, there's snow capped yeah. mountains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's a pretty oh, oh, no, snow is coming down and we're on our way to Switzerland. My kids are like, wait, Greece doesn't have snow. And I'm like, surprise, it does, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, OK, so let's talk about some of your itineraries and what you guys sure. have. You've got three, four seven days you guys get over into israel and um turkey which i love turkey so much so mm -hmm. i love to see itineraries with turkey on it and yeah. it's a shame that we haven't been doing more turkey well i think uh, yeah turkey was also on the same itinerary mm -hmm. in istanbul I, I have been wanting to go there for so long and yeah. it did not disappoint it it it's far amazing. exceeded my mm -hmm. expectations right. like it was just such a dynamic city with like Con the contrast between old and new right. and all of the architecture and the food was yeah. amazing. The people are so warm and welcoming um, and the landscape is just beautiful. And how, how did you feel about safety? I mean, I've been to Turkey multiple times. Um, I don't have an issue with that. We've kind of had a travel alert there for a while, but you were just there. You're probably yeah, the I actually there. did the free stopover on Turkish Air in mm -hmm. Istanbul by myself for three nights before I went on our cruise. So I was in Istanbul alone exploring and I felt I felt fine. And I've just read from your post that your mom's panicked everywhere you go. <laughs> yes, my parents <laughs> love America. <laughs> They've gotten used to it. They they don't really react anymore when I tell them I'm going somewhere. They're just like, give us the itinerary. <laughs> I think any mom having a young, cute girl in Istanbul alone would be <laughs> a little bit nervous. But actually, I feel like Istanbul is super safe. I mean, yeah. I love taking groups there. And it was such a shame when we took Istanbul off of so many different itineraries the last couple of years. But you guys have it back on. Um, what are some of the stops that you guys are doing in Turkey? Well, just to point out Istanbul on the eclectic, one of the things that Celestial is really known for, what sets mm -hmm. us apart from other cruise lines, is that we're very port intensive. Yeah. So like in Istanbul, we actually overnight there for 28 hours. Yeah, we're and that's all so about because it, you get the nightlife with that. Yeah. And, and we're all about giving maximum time to explore as much of the destination yeah. as possible. And we're not really your typical cruise line because you almost think of our cruise as a floating hotel because right. you wake up somewhere new pretty much every day and you're in port for maximum time. Okay, really quick before we talk about all the ports, let me click on this really quick. Um, really quick when we talk about all the ports, um, before we go into all the ports, um, let's talk about what the cruise line has to offer. Cause I know you guys roll in a bunch of things. So your prices look a little bit different, but it's because you have so many amenities with them. Well, our prices are phenomenal. Actually, yeah. your the bang for your buck is amazing. Yeah. I mean, right now we the have is an expensive ticket most of the time. Yeah. But, um, we really make it so much more accessible almost because staying on those islands it's it costs a pretty penny and the thing is is normally when you go to the greek islands if you're doing it on your own and piecing it together you're going to be either traveling by ferry or flying and both of those 
things really suck up a lot of your time in the middle of the day. And as North Americans, we are all, you know, like thirsty for vacation time. So like you want to spend your time wisely. And with us, we're sailing in the middle of the night and that way you get maximum time to actually see and experience this destination. Um, the other things that really um, set us apart, like what you were talking about, is our all-inclusive nature. So we have an all-inclusive package. That's how we operate. Your cruise fare automatically includes unlimited drinks, beer, wine, liquor, coffee, soda. It's all included. Um, and at being a Greek cruise line, our onboard experience is really an extension of the destination. So like the beer and wine that we're including, it's Greek labels. Okay. Um, the meals that we're including, yes, we offer something for everyone, but we also sprinkle in like the local traditional recipes as well. So that right. those foodies who really want to take in as much of the culture as possible, mm -hmm. get that opportunity even when you're on board. Um, we on our seven night and our three and four night cruises, we include two shore excursions automatically in your cruise okay. fare. And the level of our excursions is fantastic. We're talking about like guided tours of the ancient ruins of Ephesus. We're talking about a full day included in Egypt, going to see the pyramids and the Sphinx and the archaeological museum um, that houses like the most ancient Egyptian artifacts in the world. Those are things that are automatically included in your cruise fare. And then all the gratuities are included. So truly, your cruise fare includes all the big things. Um, the only things that you're going to spend while you're there is if you add on additional optional shore excursions. If you want to go to the spa, the casino, Wi-Fi. Um, but the big things are taken care of. Right. And I, I'm such a big fan of that because I feel like cruises are so deceiving. People will go online and be like, I saw for $4.99. And then, yeah, like, yeah the taxes, fees, gratuity, drinks, <laughs> you know, yeah. shore excursions, Wi-Fi. And then all of a sudden they could have done you know, something that looked higher priced, but was more affordable in the long run. I yeah. And to give you an idea of like our starting price of a seven night itinerary right now is about a thousand nineteen dollars all inclusive. Yeah. And that's crazy for Greece. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Yeah. And you can get a suite like even like our suite level and higher. It comes with complimentary suite concierge service. So you get complimentary butler service, complimentary room service, express embarkation, all of those amenities. A suite right now you can get for around like eighteen hundred dollars per person. So the value is awesome. Yeah. OK, so let's let's dive into some three and four day itineraries and how people are using those. Um, well, I'll tell you, most of the North American travelers are sailing on our seven night itineraries mm -hmm. because when you add on the pre and post, that's around 10 days. And that's about the average vacation right. length that North American travelers will take. If people are doing three and four night itineraries, what I always um, most of those people are probably traveling all over Europe. If they're trying to do like a big Euro trip and they're they're traveling around it's a great way to cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time. You'd never be able to see all those destinations yeah. <laughs> on your own. Um, and it's just kind of like a taste of Greece. So you know where you want to come back to explore later. But right. I would say most North American travelers are going on our seven night itineraries. Yeah. I feel like if you're going to do Greece, do it. I, I yeah. hate when you just want to stop there like one night, you know, I've been like so many times and there's still, I mean, there's so, how many islands are there in Greece? Now, now we're going to play oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so many. Um, everybody wants the Mama Me Island, and that's not even really one that it's super easy to get. It's to. hard to get. It's very yeah. hard to get to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So the three and four night are really great if you're adding that on um, to another package, or if you've been in Athens and you just have a short time yeah. frame to do. Okay, you have these seven night packages that really do some damage over there. Um, tell me about those. Yeah, I would say our bread and butter itinerary. If you're looking specifically to do the Greek islands in depth, our seven night idyllic itinerary is hands down like amazing mm -hmm. because of the places that we go to. Because okay, we tell me where we go to on that itinerary. Yeah, so um, straight out of the gate, we go to Kushidasi. You get to see the ancient ruins of Ephesus. It's amazing. Um, we go to and the we island to Ephesus. That's one of the, oh. the biggest highlights in Turkey. Yeah, yeah, so it's some of the most well-preserved Roman ruins in the world, and it dates back to, to biblical times. I mean, yeah. um, we're talking about where uh, 
Mary lived after the cruci the crucifixion where Mary um, died. There's Mary's house that you can explore there. Um, the apostle John also has some history rooted here at Ephesus and Paul. So there's a lot of biblical history in uh, Ephesus. Um, but much like a, yeah, it's also like a really cute little seaside town. If you're like into shopping, they have a pretty awesome grand bazaar. Yeah. Um, Rossi has amazing food too. Oh yes. The food is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, after Kushidasi, we go to the Island of Rhodes and Rhodes really stands out because it's actually one of the largest uh, medieval cities in all of Europe. Okay. So, so I, I have to tell you what happened. Like I was on this itinerary, Oh, maybe like 10 years ago with my kids. And I was like, oh, I'll just sign up for, and not with you guys. I was like, I'll just sign up for the short excursions when we get there. And there was one to Rhodes and it was sold out. So we were coming from Turkey. We had done multiple stops in Turkey. And I don't think I've ever cried harder secretly <laughs> than when I found out that we couldn't get to Rhodes and there was no possibility of getting there. It was like, I could swim there or miss it. And um, so for years I lived in regret. Like I never went to Rhodes. I was like right there and do Rhodes. And, and we ended up hitting that a couple of years ago. And when I got there, I was like, so well worth the wait. Um, Rhodes is super, just amazing all around. Mm -hmm. And so many inlets of blue water to swim and ruins perched up here and there and so yep. forth. So such a, you know, it took me 10 years. <laughs> Yeah, we also have one of our included excursions on roads. So we include a guided uh, tour of the Acropolis of Lindos perched yeah. up, up on that hill. Yeah. Um, and the, so it's the Citadel of the Knights. So that's one of the included experiences on the on the cruise as well. Um, we go to Crete where we actually are going to a new port um, in 2021 for Crete. We're going to Agios Nicholas, okay. um, which looks it almost feels like you're transported to a small island town, but it's actually on the largest island of the Greek islands in Greece. And there's some amazing optional shore excursions you can do on Crete from Agios Nicholas. There's one where you can go hiking. There, there's a nearby lake and kind of like a gorge nearby. So we have a really awesome optional shore excursion that takes you hiking through the gorge. We have um, an amazing day that takes you out to like an olive farm. So if you're more of like getting connected to the local um, like food, yeah. And like the kind of like the way of life um, that takes you around. If you're, uh, that's like the one I want to do. I like to taste the food. Well, I, I just did that on my last cruise for the Adriatic when we stopped in Greece. I went up to an organic farm and bought a ton of oil uh -huh. and spices and everything. And at first I was like, oh, this is just a tourist stop. I'm not going to even engage in this. And then yeah. I think about the most out of everybody, you know, <laughs> bottles of oil as gifts for people. And everybody says it's the best oil they've ever. I bought had. some from Crete in November when yeah. I was there. And then, of course, the most popular um, thing to see probably is the Pass of Knossos um, near Heraklion on Crete, because this dates back to the ancient Minoan civilization, which is the very first civilization on the entire continent of Europe. So it dates back like 3,500 years. So it's an archaeological site that you can do a guided tour of. Right. Um, of course, we go to Santorini. Uh, this is really a standout as well because we're actually in port from 7 a.m. until 2.30 in the morning. So maximum time you get to be there for the sunset. You can watch the sunset from Ia with your glass of wine next to the Blue Dome, like what you dream of when you go to the Greek islands. Yeah, and I, I think Ia for most people is always ruined because they get up there, they're rushing through. They've got to be back by 2.30 to catch yep. the tram down that's really crowded. And so that that's really a bonus to not have to rush back to the ship. Well, plus all the other cruise, shop, cruise ships are pretty much gone for the evening when we're yeah. still here. So, so that crowds way less. Yeah, it's a huge, huge um, plus. Yeah. Um, in, then we have Milos, which is another really standout for us because Milos is a really small island and there's really very few cruise lines that can go there because their ships are too big. We do have smaller ships, so we're categorized as midsize and we have an average of like eight to 900 passengers on board our seven yeah. night itineraries. Mm -hmm. So Milos is kind of like our little hidden gem and yeah. it's all about the beaches. The beaches there are like insane if you've never heard of milos um 
I would do some uh, Google imaging. Uh, the most famous beach there is called Sarah Canico Beach. Yeah. It's a nice, difficult Greek name that you can try to spell. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really cool because it almost feels like you've landed on the moon because of the rock formations, the way that the wind and water have eroded them. It's just unlike any place you've ever seen. Um, there's also some ancient catacombs that date back to between the fifth or the first and fifth century. And so a lot of people don't know, they're like one of the top three most important Christian catacombs in the world, like up there with Rome and the Holy Land. So there's some, some really big history on the island as well. Um, but we have a fantastic optional shore excursion there where you go on a boat that takes you around to all the beaches. So if you want to soak in that sun and get your beach day, this is a fantastic day to do that because you get to go swimming in all the clear blue water and hang out on the beaches. Wow. Um, and then the last stop is going to be Mykonos. So we get to end the trip with Mykonos with 24 hours in Mykonos. So it's huge. We get there at 7 p.m. and don't leave until 7 p.m. the next day. So, so you're getting two Greek, Greek islands on set. Uh, I'm talking with Kelly with Celestial Cruises. And we're going through her seven seven day idyllic um, cruise yeah. that they offer in Greece. Um, they're a Cyprus owned company. Um, they do all the Greek islands. Um, plus, they add on Turkey. We've got some Israel and different options that you can touch touch on it as well. There, um, she's talking about Mykonos right now. Mykonos is your ideal white buildings, blue roof. Um, this is what you're seeing on the postcards. When you say, I want to go to Greece, this is the island that we're talking, we're talking yeah. about. Yes. Mykonos, Mykonos is awesome. It's obviously like, it's very cosmopolitan. We overnight there, which is awesome. Um, if you like nightlife, experiencing nightlife when you travel is part of experiencing the culture of a destination. So you don't have to miss out on that since we're right. overnighting there. Um, but there's also, it's got something for everyone. We have amazing foodie tours. You can go to the Island of Delos, which we have an optional shore excursion to. And Delos is considered like the most sacred of the Greek islands. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this, the a map of the Cyclades islands, the islands actually form a circle around Delos. It's almost like they're protecting it. Yeah. Um, and this is where Apollo and Artemis are said to have been born. So there's a lot of um, ancient mythology that comes from this island and it's also an archeological site. So there's some, there's a lot of different facets to Mykonos that people don't necessarily know about that you can explore. And that's what I like about Greece. You've got archeology, span you've got food and you've got sunshine and the the ocean, right? Yes. So fun. So fun. Okay. Going to your ships for a minute. What mm -hmm. ships are you guys making for um, 2019 or 2021? Yeah. Post COVID. What, what changes are we making? Well, I mean, we already started to implement things while we were still operating before things got suspended. So we obviously have a page on our website where everyone can go to see what actions were taking place, but you know, we're still waiting for, what that's going to look like. Yeah. We obviously are, we're part of CLIA, which is a big um, cruise like mm -hmm. association. And um, they generally set guidelines for all of the cruise lines on what we want to implement on board. And they work very closely with the CDC and um, the WHO um, to help create the guidelines. So that's still to be issued. So, you know, we're going to have a better picture, I think. Um, hopefully soon and what that will look like. Yeah. Um, okay. So rolling out of COVID, what can we expect for prices? I know you guys were running some killer prices. Yeah. I mean, right now we just launched a, a promotion escape to the future last week. So we have deposits that are uh, $75 per person. Um, so it's a very low deposit to lock in your, um, cruise for 2021, or we also launched 2022. So if you really want to plan a little further out to give yourself more time, it's just $75 to lock in a rate. And we have seven night cruises starting at 1019 per person. So that's uh, yeah. all inclusive. So <laughs> yeah, crazy. Again, drinks, short excursions, yeah. limited short excursions, yeah. um, taxes, fees, gratuities, right? Gratuities are worked into that you said as well. Yeah. So, okay. 
So how, how often do you guys sell? Every single week? With our seven night itinerary, so with the idyllic, we'll, we'll depart every week, every Saturday. So mm -hmm. that the Greek islands are obviously a seasonal destination. So our itinerary changes based on the season. So we'll sail on the idyllic from um, this year in 2021. We're going to start in April and sail through early October. So we'll have two sailings in October. And then we switch over to um, the eclectic itinerary. Uh, so we'll, we'll go to the eclectic in the shoulder season. So we explore more of Turkey. We'll st still touch on the Greek islands. Like you still actually get a full day in Santorini and it's just going to be a different experience because well, one, I like it because there's way yeah. less crowds. <laughs> I'm actually an off season girl myself. I mean, that's why I've gone to Greece in the winter. So let's talk about that itinerary for a minute. Yeah. The so the eclectic is awesome if you've done the greek islands before and you kind of want to still explore the region more in depth but maybe do it a little differently this itinerary is truly designed with like someone who has a real traveler spirit so from athens like i said we overnight in istanbul so we're there for 28 hours we get in in the late afternoon so we include a river cruise down the bosphorus river of istanbul and if you're not familiar the bosphorus pretty much divides the continents of europe and asia which is pretty cool. Yeah, and awesome. we also do a visit to the spice market to kind of introduce you to the area where you'll probably be spending most of your time the next day. But the spice market is like a traveler's dream. It's like an all out assault on your senses, like with the photographs, with the smells, the sights, like souvenir shopping at its finest, like baklava, tea. I bought so much tea in Turkey. It's awesome. Um, so we do that. And then the whole next day, you, we have some phenomenal optional shore excursions that you can look at. You, I did the half day, which visits the Blue Mosque, the Hagia Sophia, and the underground cisterns. Yeah. And sure. then you will yeah. give yourself plenty of time to go wander off and explore the Grand Bazaar. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah, and the photography is to die for there. I love photography. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's, you. there is nothing lacking in Istanbul. It's just yeah. like so Turkey, dynamic. People go to Turkey. Get What's that? Turkey. I mean, I'm just saying to the audience, go to Turkey. Do not yeah. be afraid of Turkey. No. Um, after Istanbul, we don't just touch on the big spots. We like to dive a little deeper into the region. So we also go to Tanakali, Turkey, mm -hmm. which is like a history lover's dream because Tanakali is where the ancient city of Troy is. Yeah. Um, on this itinerary, when I was on board, we were pretty much the only cruise ship in every single port. And it really was like being on a land vacation, but just sleeping on the ship. It truly was like that. Um, in Chinookaly, what I love, when I talked about the onboard experience and us being a little more culturally immersive, we offer onboard cultural lectures. So like on board, we actually work with a gentleman who's a Fulbright scholar on the ancient city of Troy. So he gave a lecture on Troy and he actually guides some of the excursions. So that's like the level of excursions that we offer. There's an amazing brand new museum about Troy in Chinookaly. And the, the architecture of the museum itself was cool. I don't care what's inside the museum, just the yeah. building itself. I wanted to sit in all day. Yeah. Um, but it's one of the coolest museums I've honestly ever been to because it was so well done. It houses all of the artifacts that they've excavated from the archaeological site. So we went to the museum first to kind of get some context. And then we went to the archaeological site to see yeah. it in person. So it was a really, um, it was a pretty cool day. Then, of course, we go to Volos to see Meteora, which I highly recommend. It's it is a trek. It's like two hours each way on a coach to get to Meteor from Volos, but I've never been happier to sit on a bus. It was amazing. And, and you just have to do it. I mean, yeah. it's like you go to it's like five hours to hike up yeah. to that. You know, and it's, it's a full day. You have to do it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a full day optional shore excursion. It's $105 and it includes a, an amazing lunch, a traditional Greek lunch. And from where we eat, the, the restaurant we eat at, it's panoramic views of Meteora. So the whole day was a, of amazing value. Um, we are now going to Thessaloniki. It's a new port for us in 2021 that we've added. Oh, to you guys just posted that. There's a brand new yeah. one. About that. Yeah. And Thessaloniki has 
some amazing history. It's kind of cool. It has like a hip feeling in juxtaposition with the ancient culture because it is a college town. Right. Uh, but I mean, Alexander the Great, this is a huge um, place in history where uh, there's lots of stories about Alexander the Great. There's amazing architecture, the food in Thessaloniki, it's a big culinary destination. So if you're a foodie, you're gonna love this place. There. Yeah. Um, and then we're spending a full day in Santorini as well now. So uh, like I said, I love taking photographs. This is, it starts to be around the time when some restaurants and cafes might start closing on Santorini, but there was honestly enough open um, to yeah. get a coffee or get lunch. And I got photographs of Santorini with not a single tourist in my photos. Which, which so, is so amazing because I keep saying it's so amazing, so amazing, but um, the tourist imprint there, footprint is so, I mean, there's just so many people now going to Greece that during certain seasons, you're like, oh, this is suffocating. Um, and so this is such a, an ideal, you know, time to go and thing to do, you know, off season. That's why this itinerary is so great if you've been to Greece before, mm -hmm. because you're seeing it in a different light. And, and I actually, I, I always feel like, like, oh, I want to try out new things in Greece, but then I always do want to stop. <laughs> I know. I'm dreamy when I'm there, because I feel like that's kind of the, the crown jewel of it, but yeah. you want to see other things. And so um, it's a good way. And to Santorini is so much more than Ia. Like if you've been to Santorini before, you've obviously gone to Ia village, but there is so much more to explore. Like you can go to Akrotiri, which is kind of like the Pompeii of Greece. Uh, you can go to one of the red beaches. Uh, there's so much to explore on the island beyond Ia. Yeah. yeah. And, and we tend to just stick right there because... Yeah. That's that's well, that. it is. I mean, it's it's cliche for a reason because yeah. it looks exactly like the picture. <laughs> yeah, so okay, let's talk about the itineraries that have got a little Israel on them. Yes, I'm so interested in that. The three continents, um, we came out with in 2019 and it's getting a lot of traction. We've actually won some awards over in Europe for best itinerary, sure. yeah. which is mm -hmm. awesome. It runs in the winter time, so when like the when there's really nothing happening on a lot of the Greek islands, we do the three continents. Yeah. And this and is way, that's when you want to go to Israel. I've been to Israel multiple times and it gets hot over there, you know, yeah. in the summer. Yes. Um, I was in Egypt. I've been to Egypt multiple times. Don't want to be there in the summer, you know. Yeah. So this is truly a blockbuster trip. It goes from Athens to Egypt. We spend a full day in Egypt. That's one of the included excursions I told you about where you get to check all those things off your bucket list, the pyramids, um, the Sphinx, the archaeological museum. Then we go to Israel. We port in Ashdod. So we're in port for 14 hours. Mm -hmm. And so we offer a full day optional shore excursion to Bethlehem in Jerusalem. Uh, we also have a half day that goes to Tel Aviv. If I had to choose, I want to go to Bethlehem and Jerusalem. It's just well, it's like any place you've ever seen. I know. I feel like every comment that I'm making is it's amazing. It's amazing. It is. <laughs> but in all honesty, I think of everywhere I've traveled in the world, Jerusalem is the most fascinating place I've ever been. Definitely. So you have plenty of time because Ashdod is super far away from port. And is that an included um, short excursion? It's or optional. So like we don't we don't have anything included in Israel because you know different people have different motivations for wanting to go there. So we really want to leave it up to them to design their day. Yeah, yeah. What what is the optional short excursion look on something like that and for the pyramids? Well, the pyramids is included for Egypt. Oh, so that's included on part Egypt of Egypt is included. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge yeah. I'm really day included. That for, um, and it's Said, right? It's not very close. Uh, yes, we're we're porting in Port Said. So it is mm -hmm. it is gonna be a trek. Like, but this is yeah. a once in a lifetime place you're going you to. Go. You have to go when you're there. <laughs> Um, so what, what is like that Bethlehem short excursion cost just right off the top of your head? It's about, normally our full days are around the hundred dollar mark. That's so good. I mean, I would be expecting in Rome or, well, let's say if you were in Naples on a cruise, like a Sorrento, Amalfi coast, you know, day tour would be probably 280, you know, coming off the cruise ship. And anytime we have a full day optional that you purchase, it also normally includes lunch as well. Yeah, so prices are like amazing mm -hmm. all, all around on this. So 
after after Israel, we head to Cyprus, which I kind of feel like is the hidden gem of this itinerary because that, that's the one place I have not been is Cyprus. So, so we, we go great. to Limassol, which is a beautiful seaside town. Mm -hmm. And after two big days, I mean, Egypt and Israel back to back, your your mind is like spinning with history yeah. and like mm -hmm. it like Limassol is kind of like a breather day <laughs> like it's a very beautiful seaside town very relaxing you can wander you know along cobblestone streets in bougainvillea but there's also some more relaxing type optional shore yeah. excursions we're getting a fantastic reviews from this one optional shore excursion that's a, a wine tasting um food kind of excursion yeah. some people are saying it's the best lunch if they've ever had in their lives so that's the one i haven't yeah. been to cyprus yet but that is the one i wanted to <laughs> yeah, that's what um, there's also some history there's um the there's a nearby city called paphos which is uh, the whole city is a unesco listed city and it's the birthplace of aphrodite so you can explore some more greek mythology too in this destination so cyprus is the place to be okay let's talk about you have a really interesting itinerary that follows the footsteps of Paul, and I've yeah. actually done this one. So if you kind of are looking for a little more religious studying in Greece, which um, there's, so, I mean, there's so many different like angles you could approach Greece on, but I know a lot of people are interested in Patmos and the, you know, Paul going all through Greece. So talk Yeah, I mean, um, we have, it's a very special itinerary. So we're only offering two departures in 2021. And we also added two departures in 2022. And so it's obviously appealing to a lot of pilgrimage type travelers or people yeah. interested in, in the history. Mm -hmm. but anyone from like anyone is obviously welcome. We're not really providing the context necessarily, but it's for you to go on the journey um yeah. to these places so you can go to the caves i mean the short excursions to go to the caves that paul was in mm -hmm. and so, so super um just fascinating if that's um kind of an angle you want to approach greece on yep okay so real quick um what what should people be looking for how soon should we maybe it, it is I, i'm stumbling here but 75 dollars to put a deposit down mm -hmm. right now on a greek cruise. Um, people are worried about COVID. So if they lock in, are they stuck in or have we made any adjustments to, you know, penalties and refunds and so forth? Yeah. Right now. That's that kind of because it's so fluid and changing every single day. But I right. know the cruise, the cruise market is kind of going to need a rebound. You mm -hmm. know, I think we'd all we'd all agree on that, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to predict what will happen in the future. We all know this is changing so quickly <laughs> every yeah. day. Like mm -hmm. one month from now, we could be in a totally different place. Right, um, right now, how, how we're handling it with the short term is any sailings through the end of December, you're protected by our peace of mind policy. So sailings from um, through August, you have up until seven days prior to departure to decide you want to move to a new date. So you get 100% um, uh, future cruise credit that you have until the end of December 2022 to use. Um, if you're further out, so as of right now, September through December departures, you have up until 30 days prior to departure to decide you want to change to a different date. As okay. far as the well, you could take the risk, you know, with Greece opening up. And this is where I've kind of been sitting is, yeah, I want to go right when it opens up. We're not quite sure when it's going to open up, but if it looks like it's not going to open up, I can put it to 2021 with ease. Exactly. We want people to, to feel comfortable. You obviously want to enjoy your vacation. Um, yeah. So that's why we have this peace of mind policy. So. And, I, and I keep saying this is the time to go back to Europe because it's going to be, and I say this, I feel like every single day on one of these broadcasts, you know, it's going to be cleaner, it's going to be safer, it's going to be less crowded. Yeah. Now, now I think it's the time to go, you know, as soon yeah. as the doors open. And and I will say, if, if you're looking at wanting to travel in 2021, you want to lock it in now because so many people have moved their trips to 2021 yeah. already. So yeah. Um, you don't want to miss out. <laughs> you want to book early. And I, I think that we do have an issue with that right now. We had so many, just for the viewers, we had so many suspended travelers 
that are sitting on credit that have already shifted to next year, that if you think like, oh, I'm going to wait to book my trip for next year, it's going to, it's going to be a tight ship. Yeah. Not- <laughs> Too, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why we also launched 2022 last week because we want to give people um, more dates out further away. To, yeah, to help them. I feel like it's almost a little bit crazy because I'm like, it seems like we can't even see into like July. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mentally, but really, people are booking that far out. You know, we're moving people that that mm-hmm. far out. And so, okay, to wrap things up here. Give us some final, final Kelly thoughts. Okay. Go oh, some final Kelly thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think that the, the biggest thing to know about Celestial, anything you take away from this is that with us, our primary goal is really showing you the destination. A lot of other cruise lines, they get you to the port, but we truly immerse you in this place. We give you the opportunity to see as much as possible. Yeah. We um, take such amazing care for you on board. Like that's one of the things we're known for is our customer service on board because being Greek, Greeks are known for their warm hospitality and we really bring that to life. So when you cruise with us and you're on board, you're our family. Um, and the value, I mean, what you get for what you're paying is awesome. And you're going to see so much more, more time in the big spots, but also getting further into the heart of Greece with us. And really quick, I, and I, that was a perfect ending, but now I don't want to end uh, because I just realized we didn't really talk about the ships. How old are the ships and how do they compare to other ships in the industry? So the, the ships are considered classic style ships. So mm-hmm. they're about 30 to 35 years old, but we've spent a lot of money um, renovating them and keeping them up to date. Uh, we like, all the suites have been totally redone from top to bottom. And this year we actually redid about 95 of the ocean view state rooms. Okay. Um, all of the, the common areas have been totally updated, new upholstery, new carpet. Um, the thing you need to know about us, how we're different is like I explained, we're a floating hotel. These big cruise ships you might be seeing in the news, like that are all these big, have shiny, flashy toys, like robots serving drinks and ice roller coasters on board. That's not what we do. We are there to help you see (laughs) Greece. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So you want to think of our cruise ship as a floating hotel because you're hardly on it. When when we're in port, there's almost no one on board um, because everyone is off exploring. So when you come back in the evening, you eat dinner with us. We have a show every night. We have a nightclub if you like to dance or do karaoke. The DJ will stay playing until the last person leaves. Right. We have a casino. We have some lounges with live music. So you're going to have a good time when you're on board. But really, you're flying this far away from home to see Greece. And we show you more than anyone else does. Okay. If, if someone wants to work their way into a free cruise. They could do that by calling all their friends and creating a group. What would that consist of? What would they need to do? Because I always have people who are like, this sounds amazing, but now I've been furloughed and you know, how, how can I make this a possibility? Yeah, we offer one free berth. So that's like one spot in a double stateroom okay. um, so for every 20 paying free. adults. So you need to round up 20 of your closest friends, you guys and give us a call um, to, to make that a reality. How um, are you guys using travel advisors to sell? I mean, you guys love travel advisors, right? I, I used to be a travel advisor myself. I was a travel advisor for eight years. So you guys are my best friends. I Travel advisors offer an amazing service for all, half of them do it for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they do it for nothing, yeah. Like, a travel advisor is there to help you. There's so much, too much information online and travel advisors are really there for your best interest. They want to make sure that you have the experience that yeah. you actually are looking for because without knowing all the brands and personalities and amenities that we all offer, there's, there's a lot of us. I mean, it could be very overwhelming. Right. Well, thank <laughs> you so much, Kelly. Kelly with Celestial Cruises, you guys. Um, this will be replaying for the rest of our lives on Facebook. If you didn't have a chance to watch it in its entirety, because we know you're scrolling through and you don't want to sit down and talk to us 
or 45 minutes, but we know that you're thinking about Grease and you're gonna wanna come back and watch this and learn more about the product, learn more about Grease. We've learned a lot today. So thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll tell you.